This week alone, we've signed up three, soon to be four, brand new Facebook ad clients for our marketing agency, The Affluent Agency. Now we need to onboard those clients, so I figure what better time to go through our full onboarding process with you guys than right now. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so what actually is onboarding? Well, very simply, it's the process of taking a potential client that says yes to our service onto an actual full-time paying client that we're providing a service to. Okay, so we need to get contracts sent, we need to take payment, we need to gather all the information that we need in order to fulfill the service that we have sold this business on, okay, or this person, right? And this isn't just relevant for Facebook ad agencies, it's for any service-based business, regardless of what service you're offering, you will have to onboard clients. So if you're a videographer, you still need to onboard somebody who said yes to, yes, I wanna get you to create videos for us every single month, to actually being someone who you can do that for when you have all the information you need. Now, the first thing that we do when we onboard people, and bear in mind, guys, you can tailor this process to whatever business that, that you have and whatever services you're offering. So this is just the way that we've done things. And over the course of signing tens, if not hundreds of clients over the last couple of years, this is the process that we've found to work the best and be the most pain-free for our clients. Because it's very, very important that this is a very stress-free and easy process because first impressions are everything when we first start working with someone. So we want to keep the relationship nice and easy and nice and friendly. Now, what we do at the Affluent Agency is, first of all, when we have that yes, it doesn't matter where we've had the yes, whether it's on a phone or via email, we put our client in a WhatsApp group with myself, Joe, so my co-director, and one of our ad specialists who's gonna be helping manage the account. And the reason we do this is we used to use complicated or not complicated, but we used to use different communication tools like Slack, which is what we use for our team. We actually used to use that for our clients as well. And what we figured was is this was an alien software to our clients, right? And when they needed to contact us, all they wanted to do was just pick up the phone and have a conversation with us. And lots of people, if not the majority of people use WhatsApp and other messaging tools like that. And so we started simply creating a WhatsApp group for each of our individual clients. And so when we then go to send the contract, if they have any questions or concerns whatsoever, they can just send us a quick text message and we can respond to them pretty much instantly, right? The reason why we started doing that is because via email, there's this strange mental barrier that it's gonna take a long time to get a response, right? And so if anybody or a potential client has any concerns about anything you've mentioned in the contract, Sometimes they'll even just shy away and go elsewhere and they'll go ghost on you. Other times they just maybe won't voice them concerns and they become issues later down the line. So you want a very easy path, frictionless um, way of communicating with your clients from the get-go, so that's what we do. Second thing we do is send over the contract. Now we use pandadoc.com, we use digital contracts, so if you've got a PDF that you're sending out at the moment, strive to get that online as soon as you can. There's plenty of tools that you can use to, to achieve that. And what we quite like about, or what we really like about Pandadoc, I should say, is we can attach a payment to the end of the contract. So when our clients go through, they sign the contract, they see all the information that they need, which is simply an outline, of what it is that we're offering for them, what our goals are, what the pricing is, of course, be very transparent with that. We have a little plan for our first couple of weeks of working with them too, sometimes the first month, and also, of course, our terms and conditions, which uh, which cover us and cover them as well, and the terms that we lock our clients in for. We have a minimum term of three months of our clients. We try and get them signed up for a longer period, of course, as well, so we have uh, a greater chance of getting them incredible, incredible results. Um, so. Where, where was I? Okay, contract. Once they have actually signed that contract, on Pandadoc, we can attach a payment request to that contract. So let's say we've signed up someone for £5,000 a month. We can put a £5,000 payment onto that contract and that's using an integration with Stripe. And then when our clients sign the contract, they are prompted to pay that first month's payment. Now it's very important in all service-based businesses that you do not take payment, you do not start work, sorry, until you take payment. The worst thing that you could do is invest a ton of time into a company for them to suddenly just go ghost on you, change their mind, or something happens, they've had disapproval from another member of the board, right? So we need to make sure we get that payment so we're not putting front-loaded work in and then we're getting unpaid for it, right? I've made this mistake myself even recently. It's my, been my number one rule since day one, okay? Don't take payment, uh, don't start work until you take payment. But a massive corporate company reached out to me towards the start of this year and it was an 
£80,000 deal, huge, huge deal. I started putting in lots of front loaded work, they paid a small deposit, and then they decided to pull the plug on the project because a member of the board had decided that they didn't have the budget for it. So I put in all this work, I got a small payment from them, but the overall project fell through and I didn't have the contract signed from them, I didn't take that initial payment up front. So make sure that you do that and you're not doing front loaded work. So that's number two. The third thing we do once we've got that contract signed, that's when we can actually put a little bit of effort into this client, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send over our onboarding email. And there are a number of things that any good onboarding email should include. The first thing it needs to include is some kind of questionnaire. We use Google questionnaires, I think that's what they're called. Now essentially this questionnaire asks all the questions that we could possibly need answering to ensure that we're gonna get a fantastic return on investment for this client from the get-go, okay? So you need to ask relevant questions to whatever service you are offering. But for example, with Facebook ads, we wanna know the demographic of their existing customers, what products are selling well, what products aren't selling well, what creatives are working well, what offers have worked well in the past. We wanna know who their customers are, where they're from, what their age is, what they do on the weekend, so we can create exceptional advertisements from day one with the data we have on hand. So make sure you have a questionnaire in there asking as many questions as you possibly could need answering for that client, okay? But don't make it stupidly long, okay? You need to, to, to put this down into five to 10 questions maximum, something that takes 10, 15 minutes to answer. The second thing we have in this email is a Loom video or a YouTube upload video, which is essentially explaining how the client can give us access to their ad account. Now, some clients in Facebook ad world, you're gonna be taking over their existing ad account, other clients are gonna be creating an ad account for them. Now, there is work to be done on the client side on either of these posts, okay? So if we're taking over an existing ad account, we need to explain to the client how they can give us access to that. And so if you create a very simple Loom video or you can create a pre-recorded video, you can just send that over to the client and make it a really easy process for them. Alternatively, if we're creating an ad account for them, we, we can create that ad account them ourselves, but we still need to get the client's payment details set up on that account so we're not getting billed for their ad spend. Now, in that, in that scenario, we need to make sure we have a video set up and sent over to them to explain how they can do that. So explain these things really nicely in video. Don't try to explain it by text. We've tried that before and it just ends up being this really long back and forth process where you can really simply just get across uh, by recording your screen in some sort. So that is what we do. We send over simple videos explaining how to get access to the things we need access to. The third thing on that email is a content folder link. So we use Google Drive to collect as much content as possible from our clients. We need content for Facebook ads. If not, then we have nothing to post, right? We very rarely do content creation for our clients. We do offer it as like a side service, but nine times out of 10, we rely on the client to provide content to us. And so we put together a folder on Google Drive where they can upload all the images and videos or anything else, any relevant blog posts, or for example, uh, that they have and they just chuck it in that folder and we have access to that from day one. We used to use uh, Dropbox, which still works really great, but because we use so many other Google-based tools like Google Sheets and Google Docs, then we just thought, let's just keep things all in one place, in one nice, easy to use, user-friendly place, Google Drive. Simple link, they just upload everything that they have. Now, the final thing on the onboarding email is our client communication guide. Now, this is something that we only very recently added to our onboarding process. And uh, what it simply is, is, is it's a document outlining how our clients can communicate with us, okay? What are our boundaries? And we created this to make sure that our team aren't just answering calls at eight o'clock at night and clients expect that of them. So we very clearly outline how they communicate. Now with us personally, that outlines that the client can reach us at any time during usual business hours, Monday to Friday, in the WhatsApp group, okay? We will respond within 24 hours as an absolute maximum, but usually within 24 minutes. Now, we do respond on weekends as well. We don't really outline that in the document, but of course we will do. We'll always respond as much as we possibly can because we want the client to be happy. The second thing that outlines is we have bi-weekly reports. So we send over a Loom video report to the client when we're first starting out to keep them updated with how results are going on their Facebook ad account. We simply talk them through all the numbers that mean uh, the most to them, okay? So how much they spent and what return on investment they got. We don't dive deep into all the very small metrics unless we get the gist that the client wants to know those statistics. Final thing we outline is that we have a monthly strategy call. So we have a strategy call with our clients. We spend about an hour on the phone with them where we break down their overall marketing strategy every single month. Because to us, we're not just a Facebook ad agency. We want to look at the overall marketing strategy for this business. Sometimes that's even product consulting and 
branding consultancy. So we're always trying to improve the overall business. So we never really hit a ceiling with our clients. There's always a way to expand and grow. We've even helped our clients with their manufacturing process when we've scaled them up really quickly on Facebook ads and they've hit this ceiling. They can't keep up with the demand of manufacturing. And so we've helped them actually expand that process and given them ideas with their production line there um, and, and all the logistics and things like that. So. And that is what we do every single month. So we have that call. But what this is this is saying to the client is, look, don't call us every day, okay? Don't call us every other day. You have this call with us monthly. And if you need us in the short term, you can message us on WhatsApp. And all of our clients are extremely happy with that. We speak to some of our clients almost every single day. Some clients we speak to them every couple of months. It really depends on the person. And some people like more attention than others need. And uh, it's just very important that they understand from the get-go how the, that communication process works with your company so they don't feel lost in needing to speak to you. But yeah, it's really important that the client just understands how they can reach you when they need to reach you and they have that reassurance that if they need you, if something's gone wrong, then you're gonna be there and you're gonna be accessible to them. So that is very simply our onboarding process. They have everything they need in that email and then anything else extra is just communicated via our WhatsApp group. And it is very, very important in the early stages with a client and the most crucial stages in any service-based business. This is when the relationship is the youngest and it's the most impressionable, okay? We need to make a really, really great first impression, which is why you need to systemize this onboarding process and make it nice and seamless for the client so it's not this stressful uh, operation, okay? So right at the start, we always like to make sure we overcompensate with communication. Anytime we have any kind of success with this business, we will share it with the client, okay? If we have two times return on investment, three times return on investment, five times, if we've had a new ad that's worked well, if we've had an ad that maybe hasn't worked well, we will communicate that with the client quite a lot within the first couple of weeks because we want them to feel in touch with what is going on and we also want them to know that we genuinely care about them we haven't just signed them up and thrown them to the curbside and uh, just providing a, a very generic service to them right we need them to know that we are personally invested in their business and personally invested in building a great relationship with them and that is the fundamental to success in any service-based business. It's the relationships that the business owners have and the team have with their clients. Because if you have great relationships and happy clients, you will always get referrals for your business. And when you get referrals, you literally do not have to sell. I cannot remember the last time we did outbound sales for the agency. Everything is inbound and they're pre-sold leads. who are coming to us because they've been recommended to us from one of our very happy clients who are actually, to be honest, just our friends after a month or two. So that is an overview of our onboarding process. Now, for those of you that don't wanna go ahead and create your own onboarding system, then click the link in the description and check out the Affluent Academy, which is our agency training program that teaches you how to launch or scale a six or seven figure marketing agency of your own, regardless of the service that you provide. Now in there, we of course outline everything that we've gone through today. We give you the contract templates, the emails that we send out, so that exact onboarding email, the video templates, all the way through to our client communication guide, which you can literally replicate and change the logo for your business. So if that interests you, click the link in the description and sign up to the Affluent Academy today. Cool, that's it for me. Need to onboard these new clients. I'll see you all soon. Cheers.